in the Bible. There are four Gospels in the New Testament of the Bible. Each of these is a written account of Jesus' life on earth and the things he did while he was here. Most of us know the story of Jesus being born at Christmas time, and following this we learn very little about his life until he's about 30. Then he starts doing amazing miracles and healing people. This is the context for the story that I'm going to read today. This particular story actually happens in three of the Gospels, and I'm going to read it from the one called Mark. It's chapter 5, verse 25 to 34. Jesus is actually on his way to heal a synagogue's leader's daughter, and a large crowd came around him and pressed around him. So, and a woman who was there, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. In, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So have you ever been in a crowd around a famous person and you really want them to notice you? but at the same time you might be scared of them noticing you or feel unworthy or not good enough. Is that something that's happened maybe at a music concert? I was at a Brian Adams concert once, which I know some of you may not think he's the best famous person to be at, but I like him quite a lot. Um, and they gave one person the opportunity to go up on stage and dance with him. Loads of people were volunteering for it, and the person they chose wasn't actually the best at dancing, but she seemed so happy to be up there with Brian Adams. So for her, it was probably a dream come true. For me, that would be my absolute worst nightmare. I was very happy at the concert, but if you had put me on the stage, I felt like I would have died of embarrassment. Going back to the Bible story, this woman in the crowd would have been an outcast. Due to her constant bleeding, she wouldn't be allowed in the temple, she would have been considered unclean. This woman would have been lonely. She had no money. It said that she'd spent it all on the doctors and she'd got nowhere. She had heard about Jesus, that he had been healing people, and she believed that he could make her well. But she didn't believe that she could actually ask someone like Jesus to help her. She couldn't approach him to talk to him. He was too important, and she was a nobody who wasn't welcome especially not in terms of touching anyone because she was unclean. So in her desperation, she reaches out just to touch the edge of Jesus' cloak and maybe, maybe she will be healed. And she is. Immediately she stops bleeding. However, she can't stay unnoticed. Jesus has noticed that the power has gone from him and asks who touched him. Jesus is in the middle of a crowd of people. They would have all been pressed together everyone would have been touching him. If you've got on a crowded bus or a train to go somewhere, you might know what it's like. You've got people all around you. If you're in a market stall and you, you want, there's a bargain there, there's people pressing all around you. You can't avoid people touching you. You get pressed together in the crowd. But Jesus kept asking and looking around for the individual. And in the end, the woman came forward and explained. How hard must that have been for her to come forward? She didn't feel that she was worthy to talk to him. She would have been ignored for many years. And yet Jesus, this amazing healer, was looking for her. When she explained what had happened, he said, Daughter, go in peace. You are freed from your suffering. What an incredible gift. I wonder if she was worried that he would tell her off, that he would tell everyone she wasn't worthy to be healed. Maybe she was worried that he'd take the healing away. 
but instead he tells her to go in peace. He reassures her, and by calling her his daughter, he's telling everyone that she is no longer an outcast. He is publicly sharing her healing so that she will be accepted back into society. So although it was a really hard thing for her to do, it actually had the best outcome. So what does this story mean for us? Hopefully, none of us have been bleeding for 12 years. But it does tell us that no matter how low we feel, how hard things are, we are always within Jesus' reach. If we seek him, he will be there for us. He is never too busy for us. He will always stop and make that time that we need. He loves us no matter what we've done or the things we haven't done. And he's always waiting to bring us back into his family. Unfortunately, this does not mean that everything will instantly be okay or nothing bad will ever happen to us. It doesn't mean that life won't be hard, but it does mean that we have a God that loves us and we, who will listen when we pray. And we can have a Christian family around us too, if that's what we want. This is not the only place in the Bible that talks about God's love for us. In fact, the big story throughout the whole Bible is that God loved his people so much that he sent Jesus to rescue us all and that Jesus is coming back again too. The song we heard first today is based on a very famous verse in John's Gospel, John 3:16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That means that God loves us so much that he sent his Son so that we do not have to die and if we choose to, we can have a relationship with him. So I, this Connect on Sunday has been planned for a couple of years now because we were going to do it before COVID struck. Um, and I always planned at the first one to talk about God's love. The fact that it's now fallen on Valentine's weekend, for me just said that that's God confirming that this was the right thing to talk about today. Um, but we don't need to receive a Valentine's card to know that Jesus loves us. We know that he loves us and he will be there for us no matter what we think of, our, what we think of ourselves, we are loved by him. <laughs>